Uh, I, together with my colleagues uh, here today, are representing the Pale Red Dot Collaboration, uh, a project uh, that uh, joins 31 scientists of eight countries around the world to uh, study and search for exoplanets around our closest neighbor, the star Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is uh, the closest star, as I say, to the solar system at only 4.2 light years away. Uh, and uh, we took uh, data from uh, two ESO instruments plus two other photometric observatories to search for these exoplanets. Um, our previous campaigns, uh, pre the Pale Red Dot collaboration, revealed a signal which was significant but was not unique. And we were not sure then if that uh, signal was due to magnetic activity. That's why we started the Pale Red Dot campaigns and uh, this uh, campaign has finished a few months ago and it finished successfully. Let's talk about the Pale Red Dot campaign. What we are doing here is basically measuring the motion of this star over a few orbital periods or over a few periods of the signal that we thought it was in the data. For this we are using the HARPS spectrograph which is one of the most precise radial velocity machines that exist and also we are looking at the star with two photometric telescopes that basically tell us if the star is flaring, if there is activity, if the star is rotating or is something that could be causing this signal that we, th we saw in the previous data and we are trying to confirm now. So that's how the Pale Dot campaign worked. We look at the star for 60 nights, we knew that the period was at 11 days, we see the same variability in the Doppler data, but this means that we have a signal that is consistent in both data sets. Now, to get from this signal to actually saying that this is a planet, there's a last check, which is checking for the activity data. The activity data shows the rotation, shows the flares, shows other things related to activity, but there's no trace basically of this Doppler signal, there's not footprint of Doppler signal in the activity, therefore we conclude that Proxima Centauri is orbited by a planet at an 11.2 days period that um, gives us, we can estimate that the mass of the planet is around 1.3 Earth masses and that's basically the information that we have. From that we can use Kepler's law to infer the distance between the planet and the star and for example its temperature and this is, um, and this is what um, my colleague Ansgar will tell you about. So what does this mean? We've just learned that the orbital period of the planet is 11.2 days. From that, together with the mass of the star, we can calculate the distance between the planet and its star. And that's about 5% of an astronomical unit, the distance between Sun and Earth. Knowing the temperature of the star, this means that the temperature on the planet is very similar to the one on Earth, assuming the planet also has an atmosphere. We also know that the mass of the planet is 1.3 Earth masses. That's the minimum mass, but it's quite unlikely that it's a lot higher than this. From this, and simulations, and other observations from other missions, we can infer that this planet actually has a surface. And if it has a surface, if it has an atmosphere, and if it has water, it is quite likely that it is very similar to Earth. Now, does this planet have an atmosphere? Does it have water? We don't know. But it is not excluded. Different models of planet formation and planet evolution tell us that there are scenarios that can end up with, with a, a planet with an atmosphere and with water. And so it is not unlikely that this planet is quite similar to Earth. The spectacular finding about this, of course, is that this system is so close to our Earth and solar system. And in the next generations we will learn a lot about the system because Proxima b is our neighbor.